Before we start, we've got an email to read. Oh, you, oh, we're starting. We're starting. Yeah. Oh, no, oh, yeah, no, we're going. Uh, this is from Izzy. Hey, Izzy. Uh, Hi, Izzy. The, the title of the email, the subject line is autism with a little smiley face. Autism smiley oh, face. Autism Very smiley nice. face. Hello, everybody. Uh, seeing as the recent pod is heavily autism based, I thought you might be interested in my view and experience as a girl with Asperger's and a young carer for my very badly autistic brother. Wow, interesting. Oh. Please, go ahead. Uh, I obviously spent ages trying to get diagnosed and stuff, and that's because the test doesn't work for girls for a very specific reason based on what I call copy and paste. Something I really ah. badly experience, which is where you basically watch other people's social actions and copy them to hide your autism, basically. Wow, fascinating. Whoa. It's interesting, isn't it? It's almost like she was parroting the actions of the people around her, which is very relevant for the episode we're about to do. Hey, wait, is, is how it? do you know that? How do you know this? We thing? haven't done the we episode haven't, We yet. haven't recorded it yet. Because we are recording this at the end of the show. <laughs> no. Um, we're putting it at the start no. for some reason. <laughs> this, has, this is the beginning of the show. No, I know, but we're recording it at the end. You're breaking, no. you're breaking the reality that Corey you can't forgot, do this. Because Corey forgot to put it in. You can't can't edit things out of order. <laughs> yes, it's you a, can. It's impossible. It is possible. Everything has to be chronological. And we record all of the episodes at once. We've been recording since, you know, day one. We haven't stopped. Anyway, also autism can definitely be life-changing and a disability, like it is in my brother. He will need constant care for his whole life, and I'm classed as a young carer as, as a result of it. I personally really enjoyed your episode, and I think you did a good job at interpreting autism. Is he? Well, thank you very oh, much. Thank you. And that's really, that's really important to hear, I think, because so much in popular culture... Autism is used as like a, you know, like in, <clears throat> like in the imitation game, it's like mm. this character has autism, which makes them super intelligent, which is one subsection of autism and autism can be a intelligence thing and it could also be a disability. So thank you for sharing that, Izzy. Good email. Good job. Oh, thanks, Izzy. Thank you very much. Let's Shall start we the, show? On the show. Welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jamp and Luke Cutforth. Hello. Hi. This week, we'll be talking about talking parrots and crazy ladies. We'll be talking about talking parrots. Yes, we will. And crazy. Will the talking parrots be talking about us talking about talking parrots? No, because the talking parrots dead. Oh, oh, spoilers. Yeah. So we all know that parrots can talk, right? Well, they can imitate human speech. Yeah, yeah okay, but they can make... I don't they think they know they're talking. Tones. That's like saying babies can talk, you know? Babies Sometimes babies talk. don't know what they're saying, they're just saying words. Did you guys see the video on Twitter this week that went viral of the parrot imitating a baby crying sound in order to get attention? Wow. No, no so I didn't it's see this that. guy who has like a bunch of parrots. What is your timeline? Yeah, there's a guy who has a bunch of parrots and he has like, when he transports them, he puts them in a cage and in order to get attention, one of them just starts crying like a little baby. It is so cute. Let me get the video. How does it know that? Has it, it's obviously been around a baby then and had to learn that I'm, the well, baby gets attention when it yeah, cries. Yeah, I'm guessing when the, it's, it's watched a baby get attention when it cries and is then imitating the sound. <laughs> And it's like, this is a very convincing baby cry. They're very good at making noises. Yeah, as I'm sure you're going to teach us in this well, episode I'm about of to tell you, yeah. Listen to this, though. Okay, this is Nico. That's a baby. Nico, are you done? That's just a baby. Look at the video. This is what I go through every day. And people think I have a crying baby up here. I will show you. It's really just Nico. <laughs> Nico. That's Nico. awful. That's Stop. horrific. That's out of a horror film. It is I, a really good prank, though. <laughs> when this episode goes out, I will put that on our Side Guys Twitter or I'll retweet it or something. Please do. Oh and you God. can all go and look at it. You can go find us on Side Guys Pod on Twitter and you can follow <laughs> us and you can look at that video, which That's I'll put That's disturbed there. me a little bit. Hell that yeah. is ridiculous. But like you said, uh, parrots can't actually understand what they're saying. Some, well, mm, they can kind of understand. What the, what the signs that they're saying. They mean. can associate a sound with an outcome, but they can't yeah. understand grammar yes, or put it, together grammatical sentences. Well, that's the thing. What? Well, can what? They? Maybe, well, not all parrots, obviously, can kind of maybe understand things that they say and understand grammar. But I'll get into that. Okay. First, I'm going to tell you about hu how humans speak. Humans have the same kind of apparatus do they? to talk that chimps do. The chimps do well, yeah, like other primates, but we do talking a little bit better than they do, like a voice box. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Well, yeah, and lungs, and a throat, and lips, and a tongue, as opposed to other animals I that never, don't have lungs. I never thought of myself <laughs> like insects, as using yeah. my lips to talk. 
I suppose I do. They're very important. Yeah. Talking is one of the most complex things. It's probably the most complex thing that your brain does. I'm suddenly yeah. really aware of my lips. I don't think I've ever Stop. been aware of my no, lips. No, don't do that. Ooh. Think about your lips while you say words. Hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> so you know how we talk, right? Do you? Can you give a description of the talking process? Uh, and no. We think here, of here a you, thought. you can talk while you do it. There you go. Okay. We vibrate a thing in our throats. Is that the first thing you do? Uh, well, we think of what we want to say first. Yeah. Okay. And then we vibrate a thing in our throats and then we shape the sort of uh, shape of that sound with our mouths mm. and hey. our tongue. <laughs> That's right. You missed out the key part, oh. which is you vibrate it by pushing things, pushing air out from oh, your lungs. Okay. My mistake. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I don't do that. I just talk. My body does that. It just makes a noise. He's got a little speaker system. You don't in even him. have to think about it. Just but yeah, so your lungs are very, very good. You've got very con- well controlled breath in comparison to other animals. Thank you. You're welcome, Luke. Yeah, <laughs> it's just you. It's, it's just you. No, I know. Not yeah. other humans. But uh, if you think about other animals, like the noises they make, they don't really make anything nearly as complex as us. They can kind of shout for two seconds and then sure. they have to stop. It is a bit like screaming, isn't it? Especially with oh birds. yeah, yeah. Animal what about noises? dolphins? Do dolphins have because they they have little <laughs> eh, 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 which I suppose could be compared to like the bits of data in a dial-up internet connection. So like, are they that like, is way over the heads of so many people <laughs> in our audience. <laughs> are they going like like Morse code? Like I don't think so. Cast your mind back to our pilot episodes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, dolphins can't talk like people. Okay, no, but mm-hmm. parrots can. Well, yes, apart from the fact that they don't know what they're saying. I'm trying to tell you about how people talk. So you've got an Adam's apple, probably. I do. Yes, you do. Somewhere. Now, that's your voice box, your larynx, Mm -hmm. which is just some, like, uh, some little folds of, uh, of, like, flesh. Yeah. That pushes air past, that when air is pushed past, it makes little vibrating noises. Yeah. Mm. Which is your voice, which is weird to think about. You've got this little Mm. vibrating thing in your neck. You can feel it if you talk. Mm. Uh, yeah hello Ooh, if you're if you're go. sitting on a bus right now just just put your put your uh, finger on your uh, neck and go uh you won't look weird okay there you go you feel that good <laughs> <laughs> yeah so <laughs> the size of the the surface area of what's actually vibrating is probably about um half the size of your smallest fingernail wow so it's not very big at all i thought it would it would be like yeah. large yeah. you see some people with really big Adam's apples, but yeah. it's still it's tiny, Aww. tiny little, tiny, tiny little, uh, tiny little thing. Stay humble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then it uh, comes out of your comes out of your voice box, and then you shape it with uh, your tongue and lips, like Luke said. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, and like the cheeks as well, a little bit. Yeah, the cheeks, the cheeks play some kind of part. Yeah, yeah. But the interesting thing is that humans can't, we can't all discern different sounds. Uh, from yeah. Each other. So in Japan, uh, they find it more difficult to tell the L and R sounds apart because functionally in their language there isn't really a difference. Yeah, and they have ah. like babies are all born with the propensity to develop the ability to make and understand all sounds, mm-hmm. and then they specialize in the ones that the language, mm-hmm. the local language, have, and then you lose the ability to hear or differentiate at least between the ones you don't use. That's after about three ah. months. Yeah. So in the first three months of your life, you can say whatever you want. And then you lose it. Like if in Except English, you don't know what to say. Exactly. Like in English, you've got, you've got the glottal the stop, which is difficult. Experience. <laughs> the glottal stop, which is in a lot of languages, which we find difficult. What is the glottal stop? It's what, the sound you'd make in uh-oh. 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 Or butter. 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 It's the uh, uh, uh. So that exists in other languages where it's much. It's used much more commonly. But... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We just can't do it very well. Yeah, see, you, yeah. yeah, this is a really good podcast got, we do, isn't you've it? You've got this. I suck this at it. Thing. That's you, really bad. It's hard. Uh, you can, uh, no, it's like... Uh, 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 it's like you, you got to stop it in the back of your throat. I can't do it either. Thousands of people are currently listening to us go... There's actually this chart online um, and other places, I'd assume, as well, um, that has all of the different sounds that humans can make. And there's also these sounds that humans can't make. Ooh. Which are really frustrating to me because if you think about trying to make uh, it, the map is basically where the sound is in your mouth. I'll, you know, I'll find right. I'll find an impossible sound and see if I is can. Is it make because it. other animals can make the sounds and we can't, or is it just um, other animals could be able to make the sounds, but it's possible frequency wise. No, it's like possible. It's not the frequency. It's like possible sounds, but you can't say close your throat. Okay. Oh, okay. So you make different sounds by moving your tongue right. in your mouth. Now. 
if you were to move your tongue right to the back of your throat, right, that would make a different sound. But you can't do it. But you physically oh, can't do it. To the bottom of your yeah, mouth. it's tied to the bottom of your mouth. <laughs> so there. <laughs> so it's about it's it's noises that when air passes through it through a certain shape, it makes a certain sound. But we can't make the shape with our mouths. Yes, exactly. Uh, we have limited shapes we can make. Okay, because our tongues are stuck. Yeah, yeah, well. which is really frustrating for me because I want to be able to make those forbidden sounds. I feel limited. I have a friend <laughs> who sounds. has a friend. Well, actually, he wasn't really my friend. He was not very nice to me. But anyway, enough of that story. Um, yeah, he You're says, okay? that, yeah, I'm okay. I'm getting through it. Um, he says that he has a friend who cut the bottom of his tongue, like he cut the bit away from the mouth. And that because the tongue's really long, supposedly, I don't know if this is true. Maybe someone can let us know. But he said that his friend cut the bottom of his tongue and could then take it out further uh! than it was meant to go. And to put it back in, he had to roll it up like a fruit winder and like press it down. And it went back down his down his throat i don't know if that's true that sounds like one of those fake stories someone tells yeah, you yeah. oh my friend of a friend did this what yeah. you can do tongue. is slit your tongue in half and move yes. the two parts independently and then you have a little yeah. two snake tongues yeah, yeah, yeah. don't do that though i well, mean if you want to i guess but yeah, don't luke is telling you not to do it so don't just don't <laughs> do it i want to know if it's true though oh yeah i don't know i want to know <laughs> look it up can someone volunteer yeah can someone is, if anyone out there understands tongues really well could or you has a pair of scissors. Just no, Corey. <laughs> don't. That's the line I was going down. Stop it. <laughs> Fine, a scalpel. Well, you do it then, James. I don't want to. Well, I've got scalpels upstairs. I'm not that into You've it. got scalpels upstairs. Yeah. Why, Why do I've you got, have scalpels? I've got some scissors in here. I need to cut some stuff. I don't know. You're weird. I'm not. Well, you do, you'll be sorry when you've got, you need emergency surgery and I'm you're not here. coming to you for emergency <laughs> surgery. What if you come to do the podcast and suddenly your appendix is bursting? I don't have an appendix. It was oh, taken yeah. out when oh. I was eight. What if, what if the they left, some, what if they left a little bit in there, huh? They didn't leave any And it any grew in. back. No, it's not a liver, Corey. <laughs> it's not a liver. How do you know that? So, as I, as I said, we can uh, make sounds and we can also string them together really well, as in what I'm doing right now, but I'm thinking about it a lot, so it's very difficult to do it. <laughs> it's, it's called speech. Other animals mm. can't control these sounds as well as we can. And you kind of look past it, but it is a really complex thing to do. Just to move your tongue and mouth yeah. and lips all in unison to make hundreds of different noises. And it is the basis yeah. of like, I, I think probably the basis of so much of why we are the dominant species on the earth from the perspective of like scale and cha- like terraforming the earth. To Absolutely. Our, um, or like changing the earth to our uh, our needs. Because like if you're a dolphin and you have an idea to build a building... You can't tell anyone about it, so you can't get other dolphins to help you. (laughs) You can literally be a dolphin or an ant or anything and come up with an answer to the universe, but then once you're dead, it's gone. The the thing with with human speech is it allows us to pass down knowledge and uh, information can exist outside of a single generation, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Made us make all of this, made us make podcasts. And where would we be? I thought you were going to say build a house. Well, I think animals probably can pass information down through generations. For example, like if they, if a crow figures out how to use a stick as a tool, it can demonstrate and then its offspring can learn that and retain the information and demonstrate to their children. That's true. Which is not necessarily in the genetic code. It's so, usually only yeah. stuff they need to do though, isn't it? Like build a nest the, or... The thing is, there's there's a slight difference between what humans do and the way that crows do it. I think just because we're more oh, complex. Oh, sure, because we can describe an idea rather than show it. Yeah. Like yeah. if I went and described building a house in words, mm. I don't have to build an entire house and have you watch. And I, I guess yeah. that, that also comes down to written language as well. The fact that we've managed to take all of our sounds and just distill them into like 26 little symbols. Yeah. Symbols, yeah. Which they can then pass things down. with. A, if everyone on earth uh, apart from a few, you don't need to, die. to see a human. You don't need to. You don't need to see them. If as long as like you're able to read, you can be like, okay, yeah, I can figure this out. Isn't it freaky that when you think about, say, you think about a word like pineapple, and you think about it written down, the shape of the letters, the shape of the letters has nothing to do with the actual sound. Mm. It's only in our heads. Yeah, but I mean, I know that's obvious, but it's so inherent in our understanding of the shape of the word pineapple that it means the sound pineapple that we don't even realize that. It, the actual thing there is just a bunch of squiggles. Yeah. We can't see it for what it actually is. We just hallucinate the meaning and onto the, it the straight away. The longer you away. say it or the longer you read it, the more weird it becomes. Yeah. What I think is interesting is that in that entire time, you didn't actually mention pineapples, which the word and sound both represent for no reason other than we agree that they do. <laughs> which is, yeah. it's like money. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't really exist. Yeah. We're just decide, We're just all agreeing that yeah, that's 
That's yeah. candle. That yeah. noise means this thing. I guess similarly, the same thing is true in that you can't, like, try it right now if you're listening at home. Try and listen to me speaking right now and not hear the words I'm saying. Hear the sound I'm making without understanding the speech. And you cannot do it. And it's so frustrating. You can't listen to my voice have as a, sh- as a, whoa, 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 whoa. What, what, have you uh, seen a video called what English sounds like to, yes. Uh, mm. Yeah. That's exactly it's what like, I'm imagining. It sounds like, go look it up if you haven't seen it. It sounds like English, but you can't understand a word they're saying. So the, the thing is that that's, that can actually happen to people with ADHD and information processing right. issues mm. as well. Things can sound just like sounds rather than actual words. Yeah. So it is humans do have the capacity for that to happen which is crazy but i just mean that in in like a like a neurotypical neurotypical person it's not what i mean is it's not possible for you to turn off the functionality Mm. of understanding language and Mm. that's so frustrating it's when it Mm. happens it's really jarring as well if if you think something is english but it isn't Mm. but i was watching moana the other day and there is this the the entire film is sung in english Mm. apart from this one song where it's sung in some kind of Polynesian language, but it's it, like the cadence of the music makes it sound exactly like English. Oh, oh wait, yeah. and you're, I'm just sitting there like, how, uh, uh, what language is this? <laughs> I don't know what I'm singing, but yeah, yeah. it sounds good. It, it's just <laughs> it is just sounds. Yeah, and then you lose it. So that must be what, uh, unless you're right in that parrots can understand language, which I'm sure maybe we'll find out whether they can. <laughs> Most parrots, when they're imitating, are imitating the sounds we've made. They don't understand what they're doing. So, so they yeah. actually are perceiving our language the way that we can't perceive it. And then they're recreating yeah. it. Yeah, so they're kind of mimicking and attaching. The thing is, they, they kind of can attach sounds to meaning. Yeah. But in a very simplistic way. The, the, the thing with human language is that kind of apparently around about half of our brain is involved in language. Which sounds Man. like a lot. But if you think about... If you think about how much you use it in your daily life, as in, um, there's this thing called the Stroop effect, which is some, mm. I, I, I studied it in, I did this whole project on it um, when I was leaving school. Uh, effectively, if you have a color, uh, the word of a, the, like the color name, yeah. but mm. it's written in a different color. Yeah. It, um, there's this hesitancy, but yeah. you'll end up, it's much, it's much less when you're told to read the name of the color rather than say what the, the color, color of the word is. Yeah. That's a brain training exercise. Yes. Yeah. Is that. But it, because you automatically read rather than automatically know the name of a color, sure. Because reading is just so ingrained. You, you can look at a, you can look at words and just know what they mean without reading them, because your brain does it in the background. And isn't that super mm. interesting that our brains pre- preference doing something we made up, mm. i.e., reading language, mm. rather than preferencing a thing that is inherent in the data it's getting in, i.e., mm. color, mm. like like frequency of color. It like it's pref- like language processing happens in the chain of command of the brain. Language processing happens before color processing, which is insane. Mm-hmm. Because if you were in a survival situation, you'd want to know the color of a berry, you know, whether it's red. Well, it's and not a survival. Poison. You don't but, like get fight or flight and run away from the bush. No, but my point <laughs> is, my point is that if you're looking, if you're looking sure. for something to eat, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, you're, you're gonna look for something that doesn't look poisonous, which is a whole a color thing. And maybe that be so ingrained in us as. Yeah, we couldn't. Just it might. Overwrite but it. The thing is, it might not even be inherent in our brains. It's possible that, for example, because we are taught to learn from such a young age, and we do it every day, all the time, our brain has just decided, "Oh, okay, you want me to do that." And it's not actually that our brain preferences reading. It's just that we've built a world that requires us to read so often that our brain just does it first before anything yeah. else. The thing is, I'm not sure if that's the case because our brains are so geared towards language. Right. As in the the languages that you, they made a whole film about. But have it. we studied that on people who haven't got a language? Have we, let's say, done a MRI scan on some, like if there's somebody who was born outside of society and didn't develop a language? I don't think we have done anything So like we wouldn't that. know. We have no data for it. Yeah, but even then, if we were to do that, it would be such it would be such small scale as to not you wouldn't want to draw any conclusions from it. Yeah. You know? yeah. But yeah, I think I, I think from the studies we have done on the brain, language helps the va- brain develop in a particular way, which is why speaking, being bilingual, your brain can shift between working in two slightly different ways, depending on the language that you're, that you're speaking. Mm-hmm. Like languages, languages control how the brain um, kind of develops. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's like language is used as the way your brain is mapped out and you mm-hmm. create association patterns between things. Um, based on the language you speak. And so that's what the movie, 
what's that movie? Arrival. Arrival is yeah, about is that if you learn a new um, language, you also process the world differently and can yeah. perceive things that you couldn't perceive before. And that m- yeah. may be true. We have mm. no idea. So when I was tr- first trying to learn German, I wanted to instead of instead of trying to associate the German word with an in- with an English word. Yeah, I I didn't want to do that. I wanted to look at a table and think Tisch without having to go. Sure. Yeah. Ah, this thing oh, table table German word for table. Yeah, table and it tish. worked yeah. a lot better yeah, yeah. I bet. yeah right I, like i would you would i would stick i would stick post-it notes to each of the things in my room oh, so that great. when i saw it i would have to think german I rather than thinking in english yeah, it's really useful if yeah. you if you try and if you try and skip out english altogether mm. and just go straight into what your brain understands yeah okay let's get back to let's, let's get, get back, back to, to what we're actually talking That's about story. um yeah okay so um Obviously, parrots can imitate human speech. Do you guys know how they do that? Because they clearly don't have lips. No, that's what I was going to ask. How can they recreate our sounds without the same I'm guessing they can open and close their throat. Yeah. Yeah. So most birds, um, or parrots as well, have uh, a a different kind of vocal system to us. They tend to have, uh, not a larynx, I think it's called a syrinx. Mm. Um, which functions kind of differently. It doesn't really have vocal folds in the same way that we do. And as far as I've read, they've kind of got two of them. Mm. So some uh, some birds can make two sounds at once, mm. which is like, it's like trying to harmonize with yourself. We can really only make one. Some people can do that. Some people can, yeah, which is freaky. And I don't yeah. like that. Like <laughs> but yeah, a lot of birds can do that. Um, I get uh, what's weird about birds doing that as well is that they're so much smaller. So the sounds mm. they're producing naturally should be so much higher. And they're able to, make sounds in a lower register than their scale would mm, suggest mm. because they're imitating it somehow yeah it's like is... it's like uh, it's like me my natural pitch being this and then me being able to go oh really yeah. low deliberately because i understand that it will have a reaction in the human that i'm trying to imitate but that's Weird. what uh that's what <laughs> cats so do. clever that's what cats do cats generally um cats will generally communicate with each other in Oh, yeah, they, they don't in, meow. They don't yeah, meow. no, they don't. No. Meowing is for is for kittens. So cats will generally, when they're adults, communicate with each other in tones that humans can't really hear. But ah. uh, to communicate with humans, cats meow uh, in the way that kittens do. <laughs> because they know because they we can hear us that we can, to be like baby. Yeah, because we treat them like babies and also yeah. they know that we can hear it. And it's really cute. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it really I hate cute. it, but it's meow. really cute. I just... I've said it so many times. I'm so annoyed that cats domesticated us. <laughs> <laughs> it's frustrating. I'm not annoyed. Uh, I welcome the cat overlords. But like, the, the, just the contrast between cats and dogs. Like we've made dogs into whatever we want, and cats yeah. still will just like leave and come back like six months later expecting food. Still, you know. Yeah, they're, they're I'm hungry now. Yeah. So uh, parrots actually, and other uh, talking birds, uh, learn in a different way than other birds do. So with most birds, their songs are hardwired into their brains, mm. more or less. So they don't really learn how to make new sounds. Whereas talking birds imitate sounds and learn, which gives them regional dialects as well. Ah, uh, like yeah. goats. Goats well, make what? noises to do, yeah. to do with their their uh, dialect regionally. Yeah. yeah. So do dogs. What? And whales, I think. I think yeah, whales I think swim whales. around and they pick up each other's songs and come back singing a different song. Yeah, it's cute. That's so weird. So parrots will respond more strongly to a song of like their dialect than someone yeah. else's, wow. which is really interesting. But yeah, so that's that's really the key to what makes parrots good at imitating human speech. The fact that they can... Hang on, that means parrots are racist. Because <sighs> they'll pick which song they are singing based on whether it's from around their area or not. <laughs> and <laughs> in other areas, they're like, nah, rubbish music. Well, it's not. Because if, <laughs> if I hear, if no, I hear a Scottish person, <laughs> if I'm walking down the street and I hear a Scottish accent... I automatically turn because I'm like, oh, one of my own. <laughs> it doesn't, it, yeah, no, that's I, like me with Australians. Yeah, and I filter out the English, you know? <laughs> I don't think filter it's, out the English. Yeah, yeah. If I'm walking down the street, I'm not listening to English people. What have they got to say? <laughs> They've got nothing for me. Nothing but oppression and taxes. Yeah, man. Wow. <sighs> but yeah, uh, they, they learn really good is, is the key point there. It's like the takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> and also, they've got a really good tongue. Uh, parrots have really good tongues in that they can uh, contort and fall in ways that can make dexterous, every dexterous ah. tongues. Well, yeah, but every every sound more ways a, than ours. Um, yeah, well, every it can make, they can make every um, vowel sound that a human can make. Cool, which is weird because we have lips and they just have the the tongue yeah. and, a, and a clicky beak. That was kind of my next question because they have a different. Obviously, they don't have a mouth; they have a beak. But you don't need. The whole so the whole purpose of well the, I think I think what differentiates a vowel is that you don't have to use your lips to make the sound. Yeah, that's true. 
So like A-E-I-O-U. I don't have to close my mouth for any of those. A-E-I-O-U. But you, you change the... A-E-I-O-U. And then other letters, I think, are, are to do with the fact that you have to use air pressure to create them. But you need to change the... My point is you need to change Hence the... Um, you need to change the um, the opening that it's coming out. Yeah, okay. So they don't have shape. They yeah, don't so have if you shape. think about it, a, yeah. a, beak is, a beak is set. They can't change, really change very sure. much. Yeah. The shape. Yes. Of it. Okay. And how do they make the A E I O U sound? Their Especially tongues. the O. Is it tongues. the tongue? The, the, tongue. Wow. the tongues are just the so tongues good. The tongues and um, contracting the. Uh, so they've got muscles throat in their muscles. throats. So they have so little they throat mouths. Yeah, exactly. So they can throat shape lips. it in their throats and use the tongue. Yeah. In more ways than ours. Wow. Which is ridiculous. I'm not very. And wow. the fact that parrots can make M sounds without, M. without lips. Mm. And but they P's. have little throat lips. Wait. That's why. Well, basically. Yeah. <laughs> throat <Which is> lips. <laughs> I mean, you've heard, you guys have heard parrots speak, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah you know yeah. what they sound like. They're, they're very good. They're very proud That's of them. terrifying. Not as good as me, though. Okay, so I'll tell you about the parrots I'm going to be talking about. And I lied because it's not parrots. It's one parrot. It's Alex, the African grey parrot. Nice. What did he do? Uh, he died. He also lived. That's all he spoke. Did. <laughs> <laughs> He was born. I'll and then he died. Reverse order. <laughs> no, no. He was born, then he spoke, then he died. Oh. Okay. That was it. It was a very short life. <laughs> Stunning uh, trilogy. <laughs> No, so um, Alex was taught to talk and, uh, you know, interact. But did he with... walk the walk? He did walk because he couldn't fly. <laughs> he had his wings clipped as a child. Well, not a child, whatever a child parrot is called. A parrot. Chick, I guess. He had his wings clipped? Yeah. He... As you in know... off? No. No, uh, no, no, oh, no, no, when no. A, just... When a bird has their wings clipped, you just clip the flying feathers. Just so the that flying feathers. Oh, I yeah. thought you meant like he was no, a no, 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 parrot no. without any arms. No. Just well, like no little... parrots have arms. All parrots are arms. They have wing arms. Shut up. <laughs> Not I'm all so parrots are armless. Not... Some of them, some of them hurt people. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> so Alex uh, met Irene Pepperberg. Is that another parrot? No, she's a woman. Oh, she met... really... Hang on, hang on. <laughs> I Alex, don't know. He met her. Where were they on a well, date? I was about to tell <laughs> you. In a cinema. <laughs> yeah, in a pet store. Tinder. I don't think you call it meeting. <laughs> I don't think. What is it? Well, Alex was in a pet store and a person called Irene Pepperpot or whatever she's called, walked in and met him and met him. He yeah. Said, okay, sure. Well, I guess. <laughs> nice to meet you, nice parrot. Nice to meet you. Do you come here often, parrot? Good to meet you, Irene Pepperpot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Irene met Alex and took him home. <laughs> Stop saying that. <laughs> okay, they were, they're at home. She bought him. There was they're no more meeting now. involved. They're at home. <laughs> Well, that, that would be very inappropriate. Like, you wouldn't, I really you, wouldn't, met, you wouldn't just take someone home if you've not met them. On the first oh, date? Stop. So <laughs> We've only just met. <laughs> Irene wanted to... Uh, Irene Pepperberg wanted to... <laughs> so Irene wanted to show that uh, Parrot's vocal behavior could be similar to humans. By which I mean she wanted to see if she could teach a parrot to talk. Had no one done that ever before yet? It's apparently not. Weird. Wait, when was this? Right? What? This was um the nineteen. What? Yeah, this is uh, about. Uh, no one had ever ago. owned a parrot and had it go hello. Well, yes, people had had parrots go hello. I don't think people have done oh, extensive teaching, scientific oh, studies teaching to oh. talk, as in to yeah. communicate, yes. rather than to copy instead. Yeah, right. as the characteristics of human language, as in communication, not just right. making weird okay. sounds. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Yes. It's okay. She wanted to teach him to communicate. Okay. Uh, yeah, so she used this technique called the model rival technique, which is a very interesting one, wherein you've got uh, a participant who <clears throat> who kind of is a rival for the yeah. attention. Um, was it a person or another bird? It was a, it was a person. Cool. Yeah, so you had another person be the uh, rival for Alex for the attention of the uh, instructor, mm. and they would do the right thing so that Alex would learn what the right thing to do was right. in terms of responding, ah. which was to speak. Yes, and then they would swap around so that the instructor became the rival and the um, rival became the instructor. Interesting. So that Alex would understand that it was a two-way, uh, like a two-way scenario. And then mm. Alex started crying like a little baby, like that parrot in the video. No, he started learning to talk so that he could get attention. Oh, there, were no baby, there were no babies involved. Yeah, there were no babies involved. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, when Aha. Irene was, you know, talking to an assistant and they would make mistakes, uh, Alex would correct them, apparently. <gasps> Wow. Supposedly. But okay, I, I should say this now that a lot of this is based on like one book and five web pages of okay. studies that I found. Okay. So Whoa. this is this is all coming from this one woman. So yep. you kinda gotta take it with a bit of a grain of salt. 
He big, was like one of those annoying grammar people on the but internet. I don't think anyone would. Yeah, but I don't think anyone would admit to being corrected by a parrot if it wasn't true. Well, they might do if they want to sell a book. Yeah, but like true. very embarrassing to be. A, <laughs> It's very I mean, I think you get over the embarrassment parents. if you sell books and then people are still talking about you on podcasts 50 years later. <laughs> That's not really 50 years later. Alex died. Uh, All right, 70 years later. 70 years later. This was, this was kind of the late 80s, 90s that uh, this, this was all going down. That's not 40 years ago. I'm really confused about the timeline. Sorry, that's why I'm confused. I don't Alex know. was born 40 years ago. Right, okay. That's, yeah. How old did he live? To 31. That, I was just thinking... He was born the same year as my mum, 1976. The parrot lived to 31. <sighs> No, parrots live longer than that. He died really? young. Really? Yeah, what? parrots can live to Mad. Think, 80. Mad. I just assume birds die early. A parrot can live <laughs> between like 50 and 95 <laughs> years. <laughs> exactly, it will die early. Okay, well, we're Parrots can live between we'll 50 and 95 <laughs> years, guys, okay? Hang on, 50 and 95 years? Between 50 and 95 years, yeah. What? Depending on the, depending on the species. That's like people. Unless Man, you're Alex and you die. It's longer 30. than people. So Alex had a pretty good vocabulary, uh, about 100 and... 150 words. Wow. Absolute maximum. Yeah, yeah, he was pretty smart. Um, he could also do a lot of lot of different things. Uh, like identify 50 different objects, recognize quantities up to six, and he could tell seven different colors apart. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, and five shapes as well. He was also able to understand the concept of bigger, smaller, same, and different. And he was uh, learning over and under, apparently. Wow. So the Whoa. idea of like, if he knows bigger and smaller... Mm. And he was able to apply that to like an object or like a piece of food or whatever. Mm -hmm. That means, yeah, was, he is actually understanding because he's applying a word like bigger to any other object. So he's understanding the relationship between the words. To a concept rather than a single wow. a single yeah. object, which is Clever. so supposedly he had kind of the intelligence of a five year old. And I've seen a video of a parrot of like they put parrots up against kids between like three and five. Mm -hmm. The parrot got a lot of leeway, but it it was definitely smarter than like. <laughs> Do you remember that TV show? Are, Are you smarter, smarter than a ten year old? Yeah. Imagine if you put a parrot on there. <laughs> Are you smarter than Bertie a parrot? Bertie Gilbert was on that. Imagine if it was Bertie Gilbert versus a parrot. Of course, Bertie <laughs> Gilbert was on that. Why am I even surprised? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was he an adult or a kid? Uh, he was a kid. Oh, yeah. he's an adult. He's barely an adult now. Could have been That's an adult. Not very nice. We're the same oh. age. It's fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I assume. I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, but they they put they put parrots up against children and. It's awaken, awakened this need in me to watch children go up against other animals to see who is smarter. <laughs> or who would win in a fight. Animals. 100 well, children. Are, animal. Well, I mean, children <laughs> this is are like very a shrew weak. is not going to win. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Uh, shrews are little shrews. nibbly, little nibbles. <laughs> but yeah, the, I mean, I think in some cases the, the kids were maybe getting bored. And the parrot answered some stuff <laughs> wrong a couple times, and they still let it they let it go by after it got the right answer. But the parrot was pretty good at it. In sure. Comparison to a three year old, considering he's a parrot. But yeah, you gotta give him you gotta give him that. You know, <laughs> give that, him some slack. The fact that you were saying about like um, the the size thing, like mm. he understands bigger and smaller in relationship to other words, that sounds like a like better than when they tried to. Speak teach a monkey to speak because when there was was that thing about monkey speaking where the monkeys like the longest sentence it ever strung together was you me give me you you me give that me you me you give are you talking about monkeys or the what gorillas? was it what was it yeah was i can't it remember it been a gorilla i can't remember so what it was they, they they've taught gorillas um a gorilla sign language it's not american That's or it. british sign right, language okay. it's gorilla sign language which is simplified american sign language yeah. okay yeah uh so it I don't specifically know about the longest sentence that's been strung together, but Alex seemed to have a better concept, a better grasp of grammar and um, yeah. the actual words that he was using wow. in comparison to the gorillas. And that's that's that gets to like the really the most interesting thing about this is that he was once looking at a mirror and said what color, and learned gray after being told gray six times, and that supposedly makes him the first animal, the first non-human animal to ask an existential question. Like, because he's recognized himself. Yeah, well, that's wow. the thing, because um, other other animals, like gorillas and stuff, haven't haven't asked questions. Yeah. But the thing is, again, birds do spend a lot of time sitting in front of mirrors, and if he's been taught to say what color, yeah. he might just ask what color. Maybe. This is so much more pleasing than hearing about when, like, a monkey learns to speak with sign language, because the bird actually goes... What, color? what yeah. color? With his little mouth. Oh, he's so cute. Honestly, like, he says things like, want to go back? Why like, go back? So if you're testing him, <laughs> and if you're testing him, and he's getting tired, and he doesn't want to do it anymore, he's like, "Want to go back? Want to go back?" 
It's so want to go back. Love. I love it. Uh, It'd be terrifying though if you found your parrot looking in a mirror and it goes, "What color?" <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, Rick and Morty with the uh, with the dog. Yeah. Like, where are my testicles, Summer? <laughs> <laughs> you cut them off. Where are they? <laughs> There's a really interesting story that I heard Darren Brown tell once about a bird, about a parrot, where he says that this is true. Brilliant story. Where he goes and visits these um, two old people, this husband and wife in a house. And um, he is chatting to the husband in the living room. And the wife just brings in a cup of tea and mm. puts it down next to him and leaves. And he says to Darren Brown, oh man, I think, I think she's got like dementia or something. She just keeps on bringing me cups of tea and I haven't asked for them. And then he's spe- he goes and s- s- chats to the wife and he's chatting to the wife and he hears, Doris, take the kettle on. And then D- Doris goes... Oh, I think he's got like Alzheimer's or something. He keeps forgetting that I, that he's asked me to put the kettle on. And it turns out they have a parrot that has heard him say, Doris, put the kettle on. And is just constantly doing it in his voice. And she keeps putting the kettle on and bringing him tea. And neither of them understood that that was what's happening. That's brilliant. But I think the real, the real amazing thing there is the fact that they didn't communicate well enough to understand that their parrot was tricking them. <laughs> <laughs> like, they never brought that up once. Yeah, did he know? not go, why have you brought me tea? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know, but that's the story Darren Brown told. Wow. He said it was true. He said it as I mean, he, it's entirely yeah. possible. He says, he says in it, like, I know that sounds like I'm making that up, but I didn't make it up. I mean, it doesn't because that's what parrots do. Yeah. And they're very convincing. Doris, stick the kettle on. <laughs> Doris, stick the, the kettle on. I've been thinking about getting a bird because I, I feel like they're all, they're a lot like rats, but they can talk. And I love my <laughs> rats, but I'd also like for my rats to be able to talk to me. <laughs> They can talk in other ways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, as I said, Alex seemed to have a an understanding of the words that he said. He asked a question about himself, which is really interesting. Uh, he also had a good de- degree of object permanence, which is a sign of intelligence. Whoa. Yeah, it, it, it's a sign of um, yeah intelligence that we use in, I mean, babies don't have babies object don't permanence, have that, at do least they? until they're, not fully, until they're yeah. about two years old. Okay, so like I said, when he was tired of being tested, he'd say, want to go back. Wanna As in, want to want to go back to his cage, back. but he'd also say want to go whenever he wants to go anywhere. Oh, he'd say, so he understood want to go. go and back. Well, yeah, the, but again, the thing is that he could just be able to learn the two separate sounds. Yeah, in the same way that a dog learns sit mm. means sit. sit. Right. Uh, he could have learned that want to go will get me where I want to go. Right. Without understanding, oh, without understanding what it actually means. Mm. Um, but he apparently wasn't trained to say where he wanted to go he just kind of picked it up from other things well and maybe the trainers went want to go but yeah but i mean yeah apparently yeah. he picked it up from being asked where he wanted to be taken right okay you know uh, when you say like want to go kitchen want to go yeah cinema well, i mean <laughs> want to go bowling i don't think he can quite go bowling he's he's not quite strong want to go bowling he's only got <laughs> <laughs> he could uh you could put it on the ramp for him and then he could flap really hard and bash it with his face yeah i suppose he could just fly down and hit the pins because yeah. you're not allowed to step on it yeah but there's no rule about flying over it yes there you go you could direct, and then you get you the parrot it. back out of the little <laughs> ball dispenser <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if a researcher was annoyed he'd say i'm sorry to try and diffuse the tension. Oh, he was really cute. I like. Hold on. Although he probably wasn't actually sorry. He probably just learned I'm sorry. The sound equals that you get off the hook. Like oh, how, maybe, yeah. Like how a cat will go. Yeah. Or like kids learn to say I'm sorry. Like kids will say stuff like that without knowing. Sure. It really well, without actually yeah. being sorry. Yeah. I'm yeah. really cute. Please don't be angry. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. really small and a baby. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying that he under- I'm not saying that he understood the things that yeah. he was saying yeah. here. Uh it's just that But he learned to say them in the right situation. Yeah, which is which is interesting. I mean it, even if he didn't learn what things meant, he still managed to learn 150 words attached sound and attach to meaning, them to yeah. meaning. Which mm. is which is really, really That's interesting. Pretty good. He would say, uh, want a banana? And if you gave him a nut, he would <laughs> sit in banana. Yeah, but he would sit in silence if you gave him a nut or something else. Oh, yeah, he, he, would, he would then ask for a banana again or throw the nut away. I say uh, the nut away. He would throw the nut at the researcher. 
<laughs> this is what you get. Yeah, and then he would ask for the banana again. <laughs> so like, you give him a nut, Want but he asks for a banana. A banana. Yeah, and he chucks the nut at you. And also, he got bored of testing quite a lot. Uh, oh, so you don't want to learn anymore. Well, the thing is, yeah. So they'd ask him questions. Uh, for instance, in this in this case, uh, they had different numbers of different colors of blocks, um, and they would say, "What color three? Like hoping to get, uh, say, red as the answer. And he just wouldn't answer red, even though he knew the answer, supposedly. Mm. He would say five until she finally asked, okay, fine, what color five? And he said none. None? Yeah, because there were no, there, like, there was not, oh, okay. there, were, there weren't any, there okay. weren't five objects. Right. So he was just like, he knew the answers. He was just playing around because he was bored of answering the questions, <laughs> supposedly. <laughs> like, this could be attaching human meaning to these, yeah, to, sure. these to this parrot, but. I, mean, I quite like it to be yeah. honest. It's a, it's a nice story. It's nice, isn't it? Uh, and again, it could just be coincidence because it, it's not like he's Yago from Aladdin. He's he is just a normal parrot that is making sounds. Yeah, but yeah, um, like you said about you were talking about grammar earlier on, Luke, mm. weren't you? That um, just being able to make the sounds doesn't really yeah doesn't string the meaning together yeah. in the right order. So, but the thing is that he seemed to have some comprehension of personal pronouns. So he would use what? different, yeah, he used different language parrot. when referring to himself. Um, so we had this kind of idea of I and you, yeah, which is not exactly grammar, but it kind of leads into it. The sure. fact that he can differentiate, yeah. to, like talking about himself and talking about others. Yeah. And also he was talking, <clears throat> that sounds like he had an understanding of first and third person. If he was able yeah. to go like mm-hmm. I meaning self and mm-hmm. you meaning like things separate to I. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. I love really you. And then be able to convey that, um, convey that meaning through different sounds. Yeah, which is really cool. I think. Yeah, but um, obviously, uh, this isn't all one hundred percent confirmed. You know, it it mostly does come from one researcher. Not proper science. Well, it's it's the thing with studying animals is it's really it's difficult to do this. There's the clever yeah, hands yeah, effect. Yeah. Have you guys heard of that? No, I've heard the name. I can't remember what it was though. Uh, so it, I think it comes from the. The horse, you know, you know the horse. Yeah. Ever hands. Basically, there was this horse that could apparently understand English and count, but it turned out that it was just responding to cues oh, from the. I have heard of the this. Yeah. Sure. So, the, oh, so apparently it would it was, say like it would count up, and then when it said the right answer, it saw the questioner go, "Oh, mm. and yeah, then it there'd stopped. be like yeah. a cue from people. Yes, on. exactly. Yeah. So there's the issue of that, but then there's not really an easy way to get around it because obviously you want animals to be social because communication is a social thing, so you can't remove. <laughs> The human element. Sure. Well, well you could give it a computer and see if it learned how to <clears throat> like converse with a computer, even if in language. Yeah, but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be the same in that in, it's not with a computer, it's not really social connection. No, but I mean know? that you could you could give it a computer and then give it a treat whenever it correctly repeated what the computer meant, or so you could mm. do something like that, like they did with pigeons. Mm. Yeah, you could I mean and incentivizing it with treats. Yeah, I mean you could. I think just a lot of these researchers want to communicate rather than yeah. just parrot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so Pepperberg went back against critics and said that she made it kind of impossible for him just to recite answers and learn scripts. Um, she said that the clever hands effect just didn't apply at all. Mm-hmm. But like I said, it needs to be taken with a massive grain of salt because yeah. we don't know. It was just this one lady and the parrot ended up Dying anyway. Sad. Yeah, which Aww. is sad. They do but that, that that is the story of Alex the talking parrot. <laughs> and I would like to leave you with um his last words. Alex's last words. Yeah, Alex's last words. Right. Which is you be good. See you tomorrow. I love you. <laughs> what? Yeah. No. That's the whole reason that I've done this. Because I love that. No. That's what he said every night when he went to bed. Oh, that is so. But I'm guessing he learned that from somebody else. Somebody yeah. else said that to him. Yeah. Someone went, "You be good. See you tomorrow. I love you." Yeah, he had no idea what it meant, but oh, it's really cute. Isn't that's it? lovely. Do you want to see a picture of him, please? Oh, oh he's the last so words cute. of Alex the parrot to his caretaker was, "You be good. See you tomorrow. I love you." Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Oh, oh all the feelings. Wow. Wow, that's left me with a positive feeling in the yeah, end of this podcast. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? So cute. A happy ending for once. Yeah. Okay.
Thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday. And why not leave us a nice wee comment? You can find and contact us at SciGuysPod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And or Patreon. And Patreon. Wait, and no, it's Patreon. not SciGuysPod on Patreon, is it? No, I'm, it's sorry, not. Sorry, I messed it up. You can follow him at Not Cory Everywhere. You can follow him at Jumpkin Everywhere. You can follow, follow him at Look Up Everywhere. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> Goodbye. Hey, that's it.